little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Running over, running over, my cup is full and running over. Since the Lord saved me, I'm as happy as can be. My cup is full and running over. Number three. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, 24. <laughs> It's just a running gag now, which I don't know if you're doing it normally.
57. Morning, good to see you this morning. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, we'll begin reading in verse 29. Matthew chapter 20 and verse 29. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside. When they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Now, can't imagine what it would be like to not be able to see. Uh, it's just like anything else. You don't know what it's like until you have to experience it. It's just the honest truth. You might think it, you do, but you don't. And I can't relate to this. I can't, I can't, you know, uh, emphasize completely and totally with someone who cannot see. I could, I, I could just imagine how awful that would be, how, how, how difficult that would be, how bad that would be. And here they are. They had heard of Jesus, I'm sure. Knew about his miraculous power. I believe, believed him be the son of God, or they wouldn't be calling upon him, would they? And they said, son of David, <laughs> making reference to a fact that they believed him to be the Messiah. Have mercy on us. Haven't we all prayed that prayer at some point in our life? Needing God's help, desiring God's help. Haven't we? Well, I've been there. You've been there too, haven't you? Have mercy on us. Does God not always have mercy? He does. It may not be the way we think that it is sometimes, but he does. God is so merciful. He's so gracious. He's so kind. We need to appreciate that. Praise him this morning. And we're going to talk more about that as we continue on in our scripture. And the multitude rebuked them. Can you imagine this? But that's people out there. You know, people are so selfish. They're so self-centered. They think the world revolves around them. And they consider these two men, but 
hush up, shut up. You're causing a commotion. Well, if they were in their shoes, I guarantee you, they'd be causing a commotion too, wouldn't they? There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with calling upon the Lord. Nothing wrong with asking the Lord to help you in a time of need. But they rebuked them, it says, because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. They weren't going to quench or quench their crying out to the Lord, were they? They didn't care what they thought or what was said to them. They saw an opportunity, and they said, we're going to ask Jesus. We're going to call upon Jesus if he would have mercy upon us. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, what will you that I should do unto you? Now Christ knew what they were going to ask him. But he wanted them to say what they desired to him. And they said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight. And they what? Followed him. Followed him. Lord. Or Jesus said to them, what will ye that I should do unto you? And he opened their eyes physically where they could see. Now the Bible doesn't say if these were individuals who had been able to see and had lost their eyesight or if they would never been able to see in their entire life. We don't know that, do we? But anyway, Jesus miraculously restored their eyesight or gave them eyesight where they could see now. And they followed him. But you see, as great as this was, and I can't imagine how great this was to these two individuals. Because I've never been in that position before. I can imagine how they rejoiced, how they praised him, how they glorified him. That was the greatest thing that happened right here. The greatest thing that happened was they were saved. Not only were their eyes open physically, but their eyes were open spiritually. That is the greatest miracle that there is. And people talk about, you know, God never performed a miracle in my life. Well, if you're a child of God, my friend, he has performed a miracle in your life because saving you is the greatest miracle that God performs and does for you. And if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can relate to that, can't you? God has indeed performed a miracle in your life. He has opened your eyes spiritually. He has given you hope. He has given you eternal life. Think about that. We could never praise him, thank him enough for what he's done for us. For that just, if it's just, if that's the only thing he ever done for me. The only thing. And my friend, he's done millions of things for me in my life. He's been so gracious, so kind to me. But if that had been the only thing, He'd ever done for me, my friend. I couldn't praise him enough throughout all eternity for rescuing me from a devil's hell and giving me eternal life through the sacrifice he provided for me on Calvary's cross, my friend. That's something to rejoice about this morning. That's something to shout about this morning. That's something to be thankful about this morning, the fact that you're today, one day, going to spend your eternity not in hell with the devil, my friend, which is what you deserve and what I deserve, but you're going to spend your eternity walking on a street of gold with the Lamb of God who took away your sins. My Lord and my Savior, your Lord and Savior, but prayerfully, hopefully, if you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, my friend. Jesus loves you. Jesus looks down on you with compassion, realizing, knowing that if you don't, Turn to him. What's going to happen? What's going to take place? God wants to save you. And God will save you. If you'll turn to him. In faith. Acknowledging your sinfulness, which we've all sinned to come short of the glory of God. Crying out to God for mercy, just like these two blind men did. Lord, have mercy on us. And my friend, God is a merciful God. Isn't he? He sure most certainly is, my friend. I've experienced it so many times in my life. 
over and over and over again. You say, yes, God saved me. That's the greatest thing he's ever done for me. But oh, my friend, I can't count the times that God has heard my prayer. Granted my request. Came to my rescue. And did for me what no one else could do. And I praise him this morning. I praise him. Is there something you'd like for God to do for you? If we really would be honest about it, we could all come up with a pretty long list, couldn't we? <laughs> Think about it. Now, God, let me make a list for you of all the things I'd like for you to do for me. We could all, if we'd be honest, come up with a very long list, couldn't we? Well, and he does do I don't know what percentage of the things we ask of him, but he does do some of them, doesn't he? Sure he does. Sure he does. But sometimes, sometimes God doesn't give us what we're asking for. Does that mean that he's not compassionate? No. Does that mean for some reason he doesn't love us anymore? No. We can't be separated from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Does that mean that we've done something we're being punished for? No, it doesn't, does it? It doesn't. What does that mean then? If we don't always get what we ask, then we try to figure out, well, what's wrong? Why not? God, I know what's best. Give me. No. And hopefully this morning, you'll leave here understanding and appreciating how much God loves you by not giving you everything you asked for. Hopefully. You will. Because let's be honest, we don't always get what we ask for. Well, oftentimes that leads to what? Resentment? Anger? Bitterness? Doesn't it? But we need to realize, we need to understand. God knows what's best. God knows what's best. We may think we do, but we don't. Everybody has difficulties. Do we not? We certainly do. And to some extent, and I want to talk about this scripture as well, we all have thorns in the flesh, don't we? We do. Every one of us do. Listen. You're not exempt from the troubles and trials of life just because you're a child of God. They go along with it, don't they? They do. So, let's talk about Paul when he spoke of a thorn in the flesh. A problem that he had that he felt like he would be better off if the Lord would just make it go away and just instantly take care of it. Just like he did with these two blind men. He instantly healed them, didn't he? Well, Paul spoke of a thorn in the flesh, which I believe to be the fact that he was going blind. I think that was his thorn in the flesh. And I think he felt like, you know, this is going to hinder my ministry. This is going to hinder what I'm able to do for the Lord if I can't see. God, please, please. Three times he asked God to remove that thorn in the flesh. But you know what? God didn't, did he? Had Paul done something wrong? 
Had God quit loving Paul? Had God all of a sudden become uncompassionate and unconcerned and uncaring about the situation and the plight of Paul? No, that's not the case at all, my friend. That's not. God's love never changes. Never. What was it about then? What was going on? Why would, why would God not do this for Paul? You would think that he would. Because here's the thing about it. God had the power to do it, didn't he? Let me tell you something. God has the power to do all things. He's God. But in this situation, no. Paul said, I asked three times. Three times. No. Did Paul become bitter? Did he say, well, Lord, if you ain't going to do this, I'm going to quit doing what I'm doing then. No, he didn't say that either, did he? He prayed, I believe. And God revealed to him what was going on and what was taking place. If God give us our every request, every request, everything, if you give me every request, you never ever had to deal with any kind of adversity, any difficulty. Can you imagine how arrogant and prideful you would become? Because here's the thing about it. When you become and have to develop the mentality of being self-sufficient, that you can handle anything, that makes one feel arrogant and proud. And that's one of the things that God hates, isn't it? It's pride. Pride going before destruction and the Holy Spirit before fire. Matter of fact, God resists the proud, doesn't he? He gives grace to the humble. So if you've got everything you always wanted, if you never had to deal with any kind of adversity, any difficulty, look how prideful and arrogant you would become. I don't need anybody. I don't need anybody. Paul realized, you know, this was given to me for a reason. To humble me. Humble. I'm going to tell you something, my friend. Human beings aren't humble by nature. Now, I've met some more humble than others. <clears throat> now, I'm talking about genuine humility. I'm not talking about, you know, you know, oh, I can, you know, you, you can tell the difference of somebody that's sincerely humble, someone just, you know, you know, putting on a show, so to speak. And I've met several people in my life that I look at and I say, Lord, I wish I was as humble as that individual. I do. I have a tendency. No, I have more than a tendency. I'm a very prideful, self-sufficient, arrogant individual in some ways. I just am. We all need to be humble. Bring us back down to where we have to, and I'm going to talk more about this, put your faith and trust in the grace of God. Because it's all you've got. But anyway, Paul says, it humbled me. He realized that, look, when I'm weak, when I'm dependent upon God, that's when I become stronger. His strength is made perfect through my weakness. That's why, maybe, these thorns in the flesh that we all have exist to keep us humble, to keep us dependent upon the Lord and what He can do. And we've talked about how that we can stand up here and thank and praise God for all the things we've asked and he's given us. Many of them we've done so many. He's done so many. We forgot a lot of them. We have to be reminded of them from time to time, don't we? We can stand up and praise God and thank him for that. And I do this morning. He's blessed me so much. And I'm unworthy, undeserving of any of it. And all he's given me. 
But I can also stand up here this morning and thank and praise God for something that will out. I couldn't take my next step, breathe my next breath. His magnificent, marvelous, amazing grace. He told Paul, look, Paul, I'm going to tell you something. My grace is sufficient. You think you can't handle it? You think you can't deal with it? You think it's too much for you? Well, let me tell you something, Paul. My grace can empower you and enable you to deal with anything. Anything. And he was able to, wasn't he? I was able to write, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Now can you stand up this morning and say, God, I thank you for the grace that you give me, Lord, to overcome the adversity, the difficulties in my life. Can you? I can't. <coughs> I can praise him for all that he's done and given me. And I can praise him for the grace that he's given me in my life that sustains me, that will enable me to complete and finish the course God has given me for my life. Because without God's grace, I can't do it. It's impossible. But through him, I can do all things. This same Paul also wrote, I have learned, and it takes some time, I have learned whatever state I'm in to be content, to be happy. Hmm, that's tough, isn't it? Yes, it's tough. Don't say that it isn't because it is tough. That's hard. Matter of fact, we can't do it. We can't. But once we look to God, once we trust in Him, turn it over to the Lord. Oh, my friend, that grace, that grace will enable you, empower you, and whatever it is you're going through, God, my friend, It'll sustain you. It will sustain you and help you. So you see, I ask you this morning, what do you want Jesus to do for you? Hmm? What is it you want Jesus to do for you? Be honest. Be honest. Because God knows, really. You know, you can say the words, but God knows what's on your heart. You can say, you know, sometimes we pray, Lord, your will be done. We don't really mean that. We're just saying that. Because deep down inside, we still want Jesus to do what we want him to do. We just do. You might as well be honest. What do you want him to do? What would you have Jesus do for you this morning? What is it is you're going through? Your situation in life. I don't know. My goodness. I barely know what's going on in my life sometimes. I ain't got enough time to worry about what everybody else is going through. But you know, you know. And God knows. That's the most important thing, isn't it? And we have multiple issues, do we not, sometimes? It's not just one single thing. There's a lot of things going on in our life. What would you have Jesus do for you this morning? What would you say, Lord, here's what I want you to do this morning? What would that be? Do you believe he can do it? I believe he can do it, don't you? I believe he can do all things. Nothing's impossible with God. What would you want him to do for you today? Tell him. Say, Lord, this is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I desire. This is what I need this time, God. Have mercy on me. 
have mercy on me. Don't be afraid to come down this altar and say, God, I need this. God, have mercy on me. I need your help, Lord. But realize as well, though, God very well could grant your request. It'll be in his time, in his way. But also be prepared for the fact that God might say, look, I'm going to give you the grace. I'm going to give you the grace. Like you told Paul, I'm going to give you the grace because it's sufficient. It's sufficient. If you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. That's what you need to ask of Jesus, first and foremost. God save me. God give me eternal life. God give me hope. God give me peace. God give me joy. It only comes through knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. <clears throat> We've all sinned. We've all missed the mark. We all deserve to be judged and punished through death for our sins. But Jesus stepped up, came as a man, died on the cross, paid your sin debt, rose again the third day to give you victory over the grave. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus, my friend, he'll give unto you eternal life. Salvation. Dear, you don't know Christ. That's the most important thing you need to ask God today. God, save me. God, have mercy on me. What did Jesus say? Those that come unto me, I will no wise cast away, cast aside. God loves you. Don't leave here today without Jesus. Don't leave here today without Jesus. You never know. People die tragically through accidents. We've seen this happen. We know that. Suddenly, by having heart attacks, health issues, there's no guarantee of anything. No guarantee. In this life. But if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, when that time comes, I guarantee you this. You'll go be with him. If you're here today and don't know Christ, make things right with the Lord. Make things right with the Lord. <clears throat> Whatever else you're going through, whatever it may be, that's Jesus for help. Ask him for help. When you get right down to it at the end of the day, my friend, he's the only one that can. He's the only one that can. Been carrying it too long? Been burdened with it too long? Been dealing with it too long? Give it to the Lord. <laughs> now, I don't know how he's going to respond. I can't tell you that he's going to do what you tell him to do. If it's his will, he will. If it's not, he'll give you the grace that you need to handle whatever the situation may be. And I don't know what that is either. But he does, and that's all that matters, isn't it? He does, and that's all that matters. And can you stand here today and say, Lord, I want to thank you for what you've done for me. Can you? I just, I mean, most importantly, my salvation. But Lord, so many other things in my life, God, that you have graciously granted my request. Can you stand today and say, thank you, Lord? But also, can you stand today and say, Lord, I want to thank you for the grace that you've given me, God, that's enabled me to overcome. 
endure, get through the difficulties, the trials, and the troubles of life. Can you do that today? I can. I can thank him and praise him for that as well. God is speaking to your heart today. You need to be saved, come and get saved. You need to make a request known to God of what you need, come and do that. Say, Lord, I'm turning it over to you. God have mercy on me. Or maybe you just want to say, come and just say, Lord, I just want to thank you for how good you've been to me and what you've done for me <coughs> in my life. For how far you've brought me so far. Just like that song, Amazing Grace. His grace has brought me safe this far. And grace will what? Lead me on. Think of the times in your life, my friend. When God's grace carried you. I mean carried you, my friend. I love that song, Hand in Hand with Jesus. I love that song. But I'm going to tell you something, my friend. There's been times in my life when I wasn't walking hand in hand with Jesus because you know why? Jesus was carrying me. I didn't have enough strength on my own to go. And he picked me up and he carried me through there. Praise be to him. Praise be to him this morning. Thank him for the grace that he's given you. <coughs> that unending, never-ending supply, my friend. And however much longer God has for you to be here, wherever your course will be, his grace is sufficient. What would you have Jesus do for you today? Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we come to you this morning thanking you and praising you, Lord, for the opportunity, God, to assemble today. God, I thank you for the honor and the privilege you've given me, God, of being able to stand up here today and tell these people about your love, about your son, about your plan of salvation, about the fact you are a God of miracles. And to be able to tell these people about your amazing grace, God. Thank you, Lord, for this honor. I pray today, God, you meet every single need in this congregation today, whether it be miraculously by granting a request or by God giving the grace to endure and to overcome whatever it is, God, they're going through. But most importantly, God, I pray if there's anyone here today that doesn't know Christ as Savior, that today would be the day, Lord. They would come and humble themselves, receive Jesus Christ, and trust in Him. Thank you, God been so good to me. I can't praise you enough, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray.